Welcome to part five of five. It's our last back to school STEM challenge. I'm a little sad, but don't worry. I will be back and I will have more for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So every challenge, you know I like to start with a reason to do back to school challenges in those first weeks of school. So today I have two reasons for you. The first is there is a lot of great conversation that comes out of this. So if you like to have class meetings, a lot of topics will be generated from these challenges, some good, some bad, uh, how to deal with frustration and how to deal with team members when you aren't getting along, how to decide fairly whose idea to use. All of these are going to be great fodder for your classroom meetings. And the other reason is students are going to go home and they are going to talk about these challenges with their parents and that is going to make it a lot easier for you to request donations of materials for future STEM challenges. Win, win. So as I said before, this is challenge five of five. It is called Apples Ahead. Let's take a closer look at the materials and I'll be right back. I discuss the details of the STEM challenge cycle in the Apples Aloft video. You can click on the STEM challenge cycle title above now and it will take you to that section of Apples Aloft. So you might be familiar with some of my STEM challenges and I love to combine a STEM challenge with a little bit of PE and this is one such challenge. So the students are going to be making an apple balancing device that they can wear on their heads and they can use it to compete in a relay race. So it has elements of STEM, elements of PE, and elements of strategy involved. Uh, again, we are going to plan for 90 minutes in order to complete the STEM challenge, and that does include the actual running of the relay race. And one of the things you want to keep in mind is that each student in a team should make his or her own headwear. That way they don't have to transfer the headwear and you don't have to worry about having a lice fiasco during your first couple weeks of school. Nobody wants that. So by now you might be wondering, is she going to wear that the entire time she talks? Yes, she is going to wear this the entire time she talks. So uh, one of the things you want to do for setup is you want to think about where you can hold the relay race. So make sure that you have that in mind and you're going to need either cones or you can use chairs so that at the far end of the relay course, students will have something they can walk around. And you also want to think about what is the mode of the relay race? Are you having students just walk the course, which is probably recommended and it's hard to go much faster with an apple on your head, um, but you might wanna throw in some obstacles like they have to um, walk, you know, turn around in a circle or they have to hula hoop or squat or jump or whatever. So you might wanna throw in some ob obstacles just for fun. I recommend making sure that each group has its own timer so I'll let students use their cell phones if they have them for that, or if I don't have a stopwatch. It just makes it easier on you as the teacher not to have to call out times and figure out who was first and all of that. And you want to be able to have each group know what their own time is because when they do a second iteration, which hopefully they will, you don't have to on this one, it's a little bit lighter, but it is fun to see how you can improve your time by improving your designs, but also by improving your teamwork and your strategy. So this is a great team building exercise and it's a lot of fun. The reason you want to have the students have their timers is rather than determining their success based on, oh, our team came in first place or our team came in third place, it's better to use your time, it's more concrete. So the time it takes you to complete the relay course for each race, that way you can compare over time how you've improved. So again, you wanna take a look for your cross-curricular connections and if you want to save yourself some time and some prep work, take a look at the actual resource. This resource is going to save you a bunch of time and ensure you get the most out of implementing the challenge. Just a reminder, the grade levels are set 2nd through 8th because the resource contains modifications for grades 2 through 8. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards for engineering and physical science for grades 2 through 8. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, directions for running the relay race and measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions, including links to videos and articles to help you and your students understand more about Newton's laws of motion. Please note, although several of my back-to-school challenges explore Newton's laws of motion, the links to articles, videos, and websites to enrich understanding are unique by challenge. 
You'll find a materials list as well as a criteria and constraints list, which is editable, so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find an Apple writing and math extension templates, as well as process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of a discounted bundle. Links can be found in the description below the video. I hope that you really enjoyed the Back to School STEM Challenge series. I really enjoy putting seasonal STEM challenges together and um, if you want to see more like it, take a look in the links in the description below for my store and you can see the 44 challenges I've put together so far, most of which are seasonal, but not all. And there's a freebie in there too. Make sure that you like and subscribe. I will be back next week, but I'm not telling you with what yet. So I'll see you then.